doing good, Jim? Yeah, no problem. I'm Dr. Megan Gruber. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon, and I specialize in surgery on patients who are completely awake. What the hell is this? My name is Ashley, and I'm here to talk about my human fanny pack. Ashley appears to have a paniculus, and this is excess skin that hangs from the tummy. This is typically treated with either paniculectomy, which is basically cutting out that paniculus or panis, or a tummy tuck. Let's learn more about Ashley's story. It is saggy, but squishy and gross, and it's probably my worst enemy. It gets rashes, it smells. She has a big, Paniculus. Now, I have seen larger. I have actually had a patient where the skin, that panis, hung so low it touched her knees. But that's the longest I've seen. Hers is, however, very, very large. So I'm really excited for her that she's going to be able to get rid of this. The only thing I wonder is how do you take something like this off while the patient is completely awake? When I graduated high school, I started to gain a lot of weight. I had gotten up to 420 pounds. I lost about 120 pounds, and now I have a human fanny pack. Quite often we do see all this excess skin in people who've lost massive amounts like her. Now, it's a, such a huge accomplishment to lose 120 pounds, but the problem that can occur is this loose skin. So the people who lose so much weight feel so much better because so much of that weight's gone, they have more energy, they feel healthier but they are then straddled with this excess skin that the only way to get rid of it is to cut it out. I wanna have surgery while I'm awake because I wanna know that it's happening. I wanna see it be done. She wants to see it be done? She wants to see a doctor literally cut all of that skin off of her tummy while she's awake? This is usually the opposite of what my patients tell me. My patients tell me they don't want to be awake for this. They just want to go to sleep and then when they wake up, it's gone. Being awake is definitely an advantage because we can remove the general anesthesia risk entirely. There definitely is a risk with general anesthesia. When people ask me, Dr. Yoon, if I have this operation, especially under general anesthesia, what's the worst thing that can happen to me? And the worst thing is you can get an anesthetic related reaction and you can die. And so for this reason, if it's a small procedure, I don't necessarily recommend doing general anesthesia. You don't wanna ideally be pumping your body filled with these chemicals. However, in my opinion, there are a lot of procedures that are just too big for local anesthesia. And one of them is if a person loses 120 pounds and has a ton of excess skin and a penis hanging from their tummy. To do this huge operation under a local anesthesia, in my opinion, is like really, really out there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of moisture under here, I can tell. And this is heavy. It weighs like at least 10, 15 pounds. The most I've ever taken off somebody is about 25 pounds. And that was that patient I mentioned to you where the skin literally hung all the way down to her knees. Most tummy tucks we take off one to two pounds. I think she's pretty accurate in her assessment. I do think this is a 10 to 15 pound deal uh, with Ashley. Trying to do this all in one day, that's that's got a lot of risk to it. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna split it into two days. Two days? Okay, so if I were to do this operation, I would schedule it for one day under a general anesthesia, and I would probably estimate that it'll take about four hours. Now, she may or may not spend the night in the hospital if we do it in a hospital, um, but she will be up walking that night, and it does take about two weeks or so to heal. To separate this into two days and two operations is definitely not something that I would recommend or endorse. Ashley's surgery is going to be one of the most massive surgeries I've ever done, but it's still much safer than putting someone of her size under general anesthesia. If her medical condition prohibits her from having this procedure done under a general anesthesia, then I would encourage her to work with her physicians to improve her health so that we could do it under a general anesthesia at some point. Today is day one of Ashley's surgery. 
We're gonna be focusing on removing four liters of fat so that when she comes back, we can do the tuck. So it sounds like she's gonna start by performing a ton of liposuction to basically thin out that excess skin to reduce the weight. The second stage would be removing that actual skin by cutting it out. If I were to do this procedure, I would do it once again under a general anesthesia and I would just lop off all that tissue all at one time and stitch everything back together and then we're done. The first step is to numb the skin with half a percent of lidocaine. And then you can insert a blunt needle and infiltrate under the skin. This is called the tumescent technique. And essentially you inject a large amount of very dilute anesthetic solution to numb the area up and to reduce bleeding. Now I think it's important to realize that all of this numbing is done while the patient is awake. And those areas that you're numbing up are not numb when you initially inject it or stick that long needle into that area. So one big issue I have with doing a procedure this huge under a local anesthetic is that is a large area to anesthetize locally. It is not gonna be fun at all and probably very, very painful to get all of these areas anesthetized. I'm preparing for the tummy tuck by taking almost all of the fat out. Yeah, that's crazy. She said it was crazy, not me. <laughs> but that does go through my head. That's a lot of liposuction. Now, four liters uh, is the limit in some states of how much you can liposuction at one time. The FDA recommends limiting mm -hmm. liposuction to five liters in general. So you can remove up to five liters from a person, which is upwards of 11 pounds or so, in an outpatient setting. In general, anything more than five liters, the FDA does recommend that you do it in an inpatient setting or with available blood and other types of products in case you have excessive bleeding. Ashley, you're done. We've reached the four liter limit. We got all of the fat off the front and side abdomens. Wow, you can see that that area that used to be full now is basically like a big pancake hanging from her tummy. So the next step is to cut this excess skin out, once again, in a second operation, which I still don't understand why you'd want to do it twice versus just get it all done at one time. I do once, one time. Now we're gonna remove that skin. Okay, Ashley, we're gonna take it off now. Oh, hurt down there? Okay. Just for a second and then it was fine. So there is pain once again, whenever you anesthetize this area. So she's undergoing two operations and in both of those operations, the doctor has to completely anesthetize a huge portion of her body. This is only done with a local anesthetic, so she's gonna feel every poke until that injection, that medication's already there. In the end, she was very comfortable the entire time and everything worked out great. Three, two, done. Yay. That's it. So I'm happy that she did well with this operation. <laughs> Even though I completely disagree with how this operation was performed, I do have to really give credit to the plastic surgeon on the show for doing a nice job for this patient. The end result appears to be fantastic in my opinion. Uh, it's just two different ways of getting there. And if her patients get to that place safely and effectively in the way that they want to have it done, then by all means, all power to the good doctor. Things for me since the surgery have changed drastically. Like I can't get over the fact of how normal my life feels now. Well, it's not just tummies that are done differently depending on the plastic surgeon. Breasts are done that way too. Back in the 90s, there were doctors who would put string implants into breasts. These are implants that would enlarge and never stop growing. Literally, women would find breasts that would get bigger and bigger and bigger, so big that they would almost touch the ground, believe it or not. I reacted to a video of a woman who has string implants right up here. Her breasts continue to enlarge and will not stop growing. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and always wait before you operate.